try to do damage right from the day I came down that escalator. They did damage before your very eyes. Joe Biden is hard to believe this because I almost don't believe it's him. I'm telling you. I almost, I think it's, I think it's people, I think it's people that surround him. I don't know. Does he, does he know what the hell is going on? But they're weaponizing, he's weaponizing the people that are around him. He's got people, Lisa Monaco, people in the justice. You know what they do? It's like the old story. A sign here, sir. What am I signing? Ah, uh, sir, it's wonderful for our name. Oh, it's okay. They're smart people, they're vicious people, they're Marxists, they're communists, and uh, they're doing things. You know what they do? It's like the old story. A sign here, sir. What am I signing? Ah, uh, sir, it's wonderful for our name. Oh, it's okay. Good. Then it turns out to be like we will, we will defund the police. Sign right here, sir. This is a great thing. You're going to love it. What does it say? Oh, it has to do with our police department. Oh, that sounds so exciting. Let me sign. Da, da, da. Then two days later, Biden signs bill to defund the police, you know? Now, to cover up his crimes, they target his political enemies. You see, all this stuff is a vicious, bad people. As you know, Biden has ordered his top political opponents. Opponent to be arrested. I got to be arrested. They want to arrest me. That's only because we're winning. You know, if no, think of it. He wants to be arrested. They never taught me that at the Wharton School of Finance, right in Philadelphia. We didn't have a course on arrest. We didn't have Philadelphia. Great old Philadelphia. I love the city. What has that city gone to hell or what? Man. I used to, when I was going to school there, we could walk down the streets. People would go that have the, the subs. Right? But now the Biden administration is trying to make it illegal to even question the results or the outcome of an election. If you question the rigged election, you're a conspiracy theorist. They don't want to talk about it because they cheated like nobody's ever cheated. But only a party that cheats in elections would try to make it illegal to question them. They don't want them questioned. You look at Georgia, look at all of the things. In fact, I think on Monday or Tuesday, they're having a meeting, a very big group, very smart group. They're having a meeting to show that they found a lot of election fraud. If you can't challenge a rigged election, then you don't have free speech. And if you don't have free speech, you don't have a democracy anymore. You have tyranny. You have tyranny. And we've got to get smart, and we've got to get tough. We need free and fair elections, and we need borders. We need those two things. Just like when they used to say, you know, we built 500 miles of wall. When they used to say about walls, the Democrats, oh, we don't need walls. We'll do it with uh, computers flying in the air, right? Said, no, two things, two things you need always for the next thousand years and for the past 5,000 years, wheels and walls, a wheel and a wall. Every computer changes, everything's different. You know, you develop a new brand of computer, within about two months, it's obsolete. But a wheel doesn't change and a wall doesn't change. They're two things that work. And it's the same thing with our democracy. We need fair elections or we need borders. We have to stop the invasion of, of people into our country. And you know who's coming in? Prisoners, people from mental institutions, terrorists are coming into our country. And millions and millions and millions of people. So why didn't the corrupt Marxist prosecutors bring these radical and unjustified charges against me two and a half years ago. They had two and a half years. Two and a half years. Nobody even knew they were looking at it. I don't, I don't think they were. But they waited two and a half, almost three years, so that they could bring them right in the middle of my presidential election, because it's election interference. These are crooked people. Now, this deranged lunatic named Jack Smith 
who's been overturned unanimously by the Supreme Court. He's tried to destroy many lives. You ever see the picture of the guy? It's like central casting. Deranged Jack Smith and the DOJ will probably bring another case along with the DA. We have a racist DA in crime-ridden Atlanta. Atlanta, I loved Atlanta. I loved Atlanta. I like Philadelphia. I love Philadelphia. But it's the worst per capita crime city in the whole country. And worse than Chicago. Can you believe what's happened in Chicago? They're all bad, run by Democrats, all bad. Every one of them is horrible. But I love Atlanta, so they have a DA there that doesn't do anything about crime. All she does is focus, let's get Trump. We got to get him. He made a phone call. It was so perfect. It was so good. This was better than the perfect call I made to Ukraine. He made a phone call. So they've been working on that. But why didn't they bring this two and a half years ago? Why didn't they bring deranged Jack Smith? January 6th. Why didn't they bring that two and a half years ago? Said perfect things. Peacefully and patriotically. Did you ever hear Maxine Waters and Schumer and these other people talking in their speeches? We will get you, Kavanaugh. We will get you. We will hit you like you've never been hit before, right? You know? That's okay. But if you say peacefully and patriotically, like in my speech, these people are sick. And they are, really. They're deranged. And this guy's the most deranged of all. They brought him in. They brought him in because, let's get the toughest, most deranged human being that we can find and put him in charge of Trump, because they want to take away our election. We're leading Biden by a lot. And they want to try and demean and hurt us, all of us. You know, they're not indicting me. They're indicting you. I just happen to be standing in their way. That's all it is. But what you're witnessing — thank you — what you're witnessing is a continuation of the single greatest witch hunt of all time. This is prosecutorial misconduct, and its primary purpose is to steal another election. They're all in a very coordinated attack, trying to take away our election of 2024. They rigged the presidential election of 2020. We're not going to allow them to rig the presidential election of 2024. Every time the radical left Democrats, Marxists, communists, and fascists indict me, I consider it actually a great badge of honor. I do. It's a great badge of honor. Because I'm being indicted for you. She's saying, that's good. Thank you. I appreciate it. And I believe the you, I believe the you is more than 200 million people that love our country. I believe that. It's 200 million people. And never forget that our enemies want to stop me because I am the only one who's going to be able to stop them. These characters, these characters that you're watching up there, they're not stopping anybody. And you know what? They'll be hit the first day in office. They'll make up a witch hunt about them. It's not going to be de sanctimonious. He said it. But, you know, take any one of them. They'll say, did you know this and that? They'll give it to the fake news. Like, the report, the dossier, the fake dossier. Remember the fake dossier? It was all fake. Sir, do you know anything about Russia? I remember when people would come up to me, Sir, may I ask you a question? Yeah. Do you know anything about Russia? No, not really. What's wrong with Russia? What's going on? This is during the campaign, previous to winning, 2015 even. Sir, do you know anything about Russia? Like after about six guys said that, I said, What the hell is going on with Russia? They set out, Mike, a fake story about Russia. They checked phone calls, millions of phone calls that I made none to Russia. They went through a whole thing. After two and a half years, they had 18 radical — think of it — they had 18 radical Democrats. They found no collusion. It took two and a half years. They spent $50 million. Now they're going through — they've spent $28 million on me on the boxes hoax. And Biden has about 20 times more boxes than me. They spent almost no money on him. 
It's a weaponized system, and it's a two-tier system of injustice. If these corrupt persecutions of our people succeed, they will complete their takeover of this country and destroy your way of life forever. And you know what? Once that happens, this country is going to be in turmoil. There's really no coming back. We have one chance to save it, and that chance is called 2024. It's the one chance we have. They want to take away my freedom because I will never let them take away your freedom. I will not let that happen. I could have been home right now. I could have been playing golf. I actually hit the ball quite well. Very long. You know, if they gave you a test, based on distance and things, they should do it, because, Joe, I don't think he could reach. See those seats right over there? I think a, a long drive would be that gentleman with the Make America Great Again shirt on for Joe. No, no, I could be home. I could be doing other things. They, I said, what are we doing today? Sir, you're going to Erie, Pennsylvania. You're going to make a speech. I said, oh. But, but actually, I love it. Actually, I love it. I love it. I do love it. I love you and I love the people because you've been so supportive. I mean, really, you really have been amazing. You have been amazing. And we got screwed. You know, we were leading in Pennsylvania at 9 o'clock in the evening by hundreds of thousands of votes. It was all of a sudden. I said, what the hell happened? And the fake press didn't want to call it. But I said, why aren't they calling Pennsylvania? And even the first time, we were leading by enough that they could have called it much earlier. They just refused to call it because, in my opinion, they were trying to cheat and they couldn't quite pull it off. And famously said, why the hell didn't they do that for me? Why didn't they do that for me? She's a very angry woman. They want to silence me because I will never let them silence you. That's what it's all about. And it's no wonder the swamp is getting truly desperate as they see us leading polls. So I have some of them with me. I just happened to have it. Just happened. In the most recent, very respected Rasmussen poll, we're leading De Sanctimonious by 44 points. 44 points. That's all right. We're leading them by 44 points, 57 to 13. Mike Pence is at five. Well, no. No. Sad. It's, it's sad. And I don't like to see the way he's being treated, but Mike is at five. But the everyone's slower than that. I mean, other people are at one and two and zero. Sir, will you debate? Will you debate? You know, they're all asking me that question. Sir, will you stand up there against a hostile network? Fox. Will you stand up there against a hostile network? Remember the question I was asked by Megyn Kelly a long time ago? By the way, she's, she's gotten religion. She's gotten religion. But, and stand up, listen, with like 10 or 12 guys that have zero, one, two, three, I may have 75, 78, 79. And I'm going to listen to some guy like Ada Hutchinson. I call him Ada because he's boring. I, I don't know why he hates me. You know, I won Arkansas by a landslide. How the hell did that guy ever become governor of Arkansas? That's what I'm trying to figure out. But am I going to stand up there by guys with zero, one, two, three percent, maybe four? and have them ask me hostile questions. And if I don't go to the debate, they say, I'm not saying this, but they say that the ratings are going to be very bad. So if I agree to do the debates, I get hit by a hostile network, but I also get hit by all these guys. And they are professional politicians. I mean, they're not stupid people. They just happen to be at zero. And they say, what about this President Trump? What about this? And I look at the guy and say, you're at zero. You're asking me these questions. But, you know, you, you want to have a smart president. And 
I think if you see me up there, even if I do well, I like the debates. I think I probably maybe won the presidency because of the debates. But, but at a certain point, you say, why are we doing these things? Why are we doing these things? So we'll see what happens. I haven't made a commitment one way or the other. Should I do them or not? Hold it. Now, wait a minute. Wait, 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 wait. Now, now take your entertainment cap, because for entertainment, everyone's going to say, do them, do them. But now put on your political cap, right? We have to save our country. We have to win. Should I get up there with 10 or 12 hostile people and a hostile network and be abused with terrible questions? Okay, are you ready? So I'll go, should we do the debate or should we? Should we do the debate? Should we not do the debate? You people just want entertainment. I don't know. What do you guys think? Yes, Mike? They're saying no. They're saying no. Fred, no? In the most recent Harvard Harris poll, we're up by 40 points over to Sanctimonious with he's all the way down to 12. Remember, he was surging at about 30. We were, by the way, we were still winning, but we're winning much more since the persecution by a lot more. And by the way, my women from North Carolina, would you please stand up? Look at this. They're beautiful women, and they, of course, you're not allowed to say that anymore. That could be the end of my political career. I called them beautiful. I'm sorry. I apologize for calling. Now, look, they're beautiful women, happily married. What number is this that you've come to, Rally? About 100. Yeah, it's about 100. Can you imagine? And sometimes they bring their husbands. And their husbands are nice. Oh, they're pointing. They're over there. You mean they couldn't get the good seats? You got the good seats. No. They've been, look at them, they're so incredible. And they've been to now, think of this. Where are the husbands? Stand up. You gotta be kidding. They put them in the bleachers. That's great. Well, they're great families. North Carolina, thank you very much. Oh, oh, oh. The front row Joes, please stand up. These people. You are so amazing. So we're really, you know, we're going to start this whole thing. This is just, we did this a little bit early because we wanted to get it. It's hot. It's miserable. It's, it's the dog days, they call it. But we're going to be really heavy hitting around October. And we're going to remember you in October. You've always been there from us in good times and bad. Front row Joes. Thank you, darling. They come out here. Sometimes five days early to make sure they get seats. So we love you. We do. Thank you very much, all of you. And thank you from North Carolina. In the most recent Harvard-Harris poll, we're up 40 points with Trump at 52 and DeSantis at 12. And uh, actually, it's very interesting because there's a lot of people on his heels. And we're dominating Biden in the general election, very importantly. Uh, we are at 45, and he's at 40. Don't forget, the Democrats start off with a big advantage. They think they have the unions. I happen to think the unions, the workers, except for the corrupt officials that head the unions. I mean, I've seen unions where the guy's a total Democrat. There's nothing you can do. And they end up getting fired because they endorse Hillary or they endorse Biden. But we have a lot of the people in the unions with us. I think we have, I think we have largely a majority. But they have civil service, and they have others. They have people. I don't want to go into it exactly, because people will say that's not a nice thing to say. But they have a base of 35 or so. And we start off with nothing. You got to win that whole East Coast. You got to do exactly as we did, and actually as we did twice. We did it twice. We have to do it now a third time. We're going to do it a third time. But we're up five points. Uh, and very importantly, because, you know, they keep talking about the independent voters, we're up 18 points among independent voters over Biden. And in the newest, just came out, Echelon poll, the Echelon poll of swing states, we're trouncing Biden by seven points. And the big new premise poll, we're beating Biden 
by 43 to 39, with DeSantis losing to Biden 33 to 38. In other polls, I'm leading Biden by 6, 7, 8, and 11 points, while DeSantis is losing to Biden in every single case. And when asked, and this is very important because it's the economy, stupid, right? It's the economy, stupid. We've heard that line for a long time, and a lot of truth to it. But I think in this case, there's a lot of truth to borders, and there's a lot of truth to militaries and not doing what we did in Afghanistan because we have an incompetent leader. Getting out was fine. Getting out with dignity and strength, not stupid. The stupid, most embarrassing thing ever in our country's history. When asked who's the best to improve the economy, it's Trump, 54, to DeSantis, 18. In Iowa, we're leading 55 to 11. In New Hampshire, a great state, we're leading 59 to 12. And in South Carolina, we're leading 65 to 10. And we're leading by a similar number in Nevada. We're doing great. Nevada came out, yeah, it's like 65 to 10. We're leading by a lot. And we're going to keep it that way. You know, the, the characters in the back, oh, they got some beauties back there. They got some real. They have one very good one, though, actually. One is a lot, but they got some beauties. But, you know, uh, they were saying, uh, you always have an ebb and flow, right? So you're leading. Like Right now, we're leading by a lot. A lot of people say to Sank, this is dropping out of the race. I don't know that that's true, but I wouldn't be surprised. He should. Because I think he's absolutely killed himself for 28, you know? But remember the loyalty thing. He wouldn't be there except for me. And then he said, I have no comment. And we know what that meant. No comment means he's running, but he's really hurt himself. But I hear he's dropping out, but I will say this. We're going to make this country so strong. We're going to make our country so great. We're going to have so many victories again. We had victories. We didn't have wars. Russia respected us. Putin respected me. Putin would never have gone into Ukraine if I were Putin. Never, ever, ever. I knew him very well. You know, the fake news hates when I say I knew him well. They hate when I say I got along with him. No, it's good to get along. They have more nuclear weapons than us, or just about the same, but a little more than us. Can you imagine that? They have big nu nuclear weapons. Nobody ever talks about that. They talk about the war. They never mention that. And uh, it's a very dangerous position to be in. We're in a very stupid, dangerous position right now. And you know what? If Europe doesn't start paying for this, can you imagine with us being at 200 billion and them being at 25 billion? Can you imagine? How stupid, how stupid, how stupid are we? We can't have this. But Putin would have never gone in. And it was the apple of his eye. I talked to him about it a lot. I said, Vladimir, don't do it. And then I said things to him that you don't want to know, but I said, it's going to really be bad. It's going to be so bad for you if you do it. And he never did it. He said, you wouldn't do that. I said, yes, I will. He said, you wouldn't do that. I said, yes, I will. I'm telling you, I will. And he didn't believe me, but you know what? He believed me 10 percent. That's all he needed. That's all he needed, 10 percent. Uh, and you know what I'm talking about, the three of you, but you know exactly what I'm talking about. Same thing with, same thing with President Xi in Taiwan. You look at what he's got ships circling, he's got planes. They didn't have planes flying over Taiwan. They didn't have ships with me. And I told them, don't do it. If you do it, it's going to be really bad. It's going to be so bad, you have no idea. And again, look, we're 9,500 miles away. They're 70 miles away, okay? They're 70 miles. But I don't want it on my watch. Wouldn't have been on my watch, I tell you right now. And I said to him very strongly, I said, don't do it, because if you do it, here's what's going to happen. He said, no way. I said, way, way, way. <laughs> he said, no, you won't do it. You know, a lot of Democrats agree that if I were president, there would not have been Ukraine attack, and there would not have been uh, this thing going on with with Taiwan right now. And uh, a lot of them agree. A lot of them agree. But he was very much the same as Putin. Just we use the name of different cities. That's all we use. Different cities, different places. He said, no way you wouldn't do that. I said, no, I will. I will. I tell you. And he didn't believe me. But he also believed me 10%.
But I tell the story about France. They were going to put a big tax on, big, big tax on the United States. We're going to tax their country. You know, France is difficult. Macron is a great guy. I think he's a great guy, but, you know, he's a wise guy. And I said, uh, tell you what you do. Gave it to Mnuchin. See if you can negotiate, because we're not going to have our companies pay tax. A big tax, by the way. If you're an American company, you do business in France, they want to tax the company. I said, that's not fair. Now, do you think Biden would think that? Biden wouldn't think at all about it, because, by the way, they're now imposing it on Biden. So I gave them two weeks. I said, do it. I don't want that tax on. That's bullshit. And, and you know what? They went out, came back, sir. They've uh, passed it. And I don't think there's any stopping it. I said, why do you say that? I got two more days. They came back. We can't stop. And I called up Macron. I said, uh, Mr. President, oh, yes, Donald, uh, Donald, I like you so much. I said, thank you so much. And I do. I get along great with the guy. He's liberal, but that's okay. I get along great. I get along great with the president of Mexico. He's a socialist, but I have a lot of respect for him. We did great things. He gave us 28,000 soldiers free of cost to stop people from coming into our country. But I said to I said to Macron, you can't put the tax. Oh, Donald, I'm sorry. I am sorry. I have already done this. Uh, it has passed our the equivalent of our legislature. And uh, I'm so sorry. I am so sorry, but I have done this. I said, uh, no, you haven't. Oh, no, no, you don't understand. Yes, I have. I said, no, you haven't done it. Because if you have done it, I am going to impose a 100 percent tax tariff on all wines and champagnes coming into the United States from France. And he said, no, 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 Donald. No, no, you cannot do that. That would not be fair. I said, no, that would be very fair. Every single bottle of your crap that comes into this country will have a 100 percent tax, champagnes and wines. You have five minutes to tell me what you want to do. I will call you back. Calls me back in two minutes. Uh, we have decided to end the tax on American companies. Now, do you think Do you think anybody — and now they're putting that tax on, by the way, just so you know. There's nobody fighting it. How about Cuba? I got a tremendous Cuban vote in Florida. Tremendous Cuban vote. China is building military places and forts and everything, installations. They're building military in Cuba, 71 miles off our coast. And the fake news doesn't even talk about it. When I heard this, when I heard this, and for Cuban Americans, with that happening, you can forget about ever going back to Cuba. China's taking over Cuba. And Biden doesn't do anything. The reason he doesn't, because he's compromised. He's taken in so much money from China that he's afraid because they know how much money they've given, and he can't have them reveal that to the courts and to Congress and to Jim Jordan and Jamie Comer. He can't have them reveal. So he's sitting there. He's a totally compromised president. He's — he is a Manchurian candidate, okay? Now, think of it. Can you believe they are building military installations in Cuba? And hardly anybody — when I heard that about three months ago, I said, this is the biggest story. This is going to away. I will get them out within 48 hours. I think within 48 hours. I think within 48 hours. They will leave. And I have a very good relationship with President Xi, which was greatly disturbed with the China virus, I must be honest with you. Before that, you know, we made the greatest trade deal ever with China. They buy $50 billion worth of our product. And we took in, you know, hundreds of billions of dollars of tariffs. No other president took in 10 cents. Hundreds of billions. We did great with China, but I had a lot of respect for him. He had a lot of respect for me. He had a lot of respect for our country. They no longer respect our country. You saw Janet Yellen the other day bowing and bowing, bowing. Can't do that. They, they don't respect that. They want to they want to deal with toughness. They want to deal with strength. And that's the only way you're going to make a deal with them. They're, they're, they are ripping our country to pieces. They're, they're beating us economically. You know, uh, China was going to take over in 2018. For 25 years, the economists will tell you, for 25 years, they've been saying China will overtake the United States in 2018. And it was happening. It was going to happen in 2018 until I came along. We doubled them up. 
We put taxes and tariffs on steel. They were dumping steel. We put 100 percent and 50 percent tariffs on steel. And we saved our city. The people that like me the most in this country are people that have steel, anything to do with steel, because we saved. We wouldn't have one open steel mill. If we had to fight a war, we need steel. If we have to fight a war with China, we need steel. You know who we need the steel from? China. Let's go. We're fighting a war with China. Let's buy our steel from China. How does that work? No, we did a great job. We did a great job. We had the greatest economy in history. We're crushing Biden in the swing states in Georgia, in Arizona, and Ohio. We're up by a lot. We're up by a lot. And up by a lot in North Carolina, those numbers just came in. We're up by a lot in North Carolina, up by eight points. A poll just came out a little while ago where I'm leading to sanctimonious in Iowa by plus 30 points, in New Hampshire by plus 32 points, and in South Carolina by 34 points. And a poll just came out in Ohio, the great state of Ohio. I love Ohio, where I'm leading by 52 points and beating Biden by 10 points. 10 points. It's a lot. And I think it's time — and I, I say this from strength, not from weakness, believe me — I think it's time for Ron DeSanctimonious and so many of those other clowns on the stage. Now, you had to see Iowa. They're speaking to people that aren't even listening. They're talking. They're, not, they're waiting for me, to, I have to say. They're waiting for me to come up. I spoke last. I spoke last. But uh, they're waiting for me to come up. But. For Ron DeSanctimonious and so many others that are wasting hundreds of millions of dollars that Republicans should be using to build a massive vote-gathering operation to take on crooked Joe Biden in November, because we cannot lose. We cannot allow our country to lose that election. If, if we do lose that election, I don't think we have a country anymore. I'll be honest. You see what's going on. Millions and millions of people pouring across our border, invading our country. They're invading our country. I put in legislation, and I put in many different things, but you have to be well if you come in. You can't be — have a disease that you can give to other people. People are pouring across the border now, disease-ridden people. People — again, and I said it, I say it over and over. People from mental institutions, from insane asylums, they say, please, sir, don't use the word insane asylum. Why? Because that's like silence of the lamb stuff. Well, they're coming into our country. People from jails and prisons, they're coming into our country. And terrorists are coming into our country. But they say, don't use these words. I say, we have to use these words. There was an article, and you may have heard me tell, tell this story once or twice, probably. It's all. But an article in a, one of the newspapers where the people are right there, and it was about a uh, psychiatrist, I guess you'd call him, and he was heading up a mental institution in a South American country, big country. And he said, you know, beautiful article in one sense, because he was a real hard worker. He said, all my life I've worked so hard. I've worked 24 hours a day, and I just worked so hard. I was so busy. We couldn't keep up with all of the people that had such difficulty. And now he was sitting there reading a newspaper. He had nothing to do. And they said, what's the difference? He said, uh, all of our people have been emptied out into the United States. Think of that. Think of what that means. All of these people who are very ill, who are very sick, sick people. These are mentally ill people. They've been emptied out. Now, you take thousands of institutions like that, uh, and they all are, because I know these leaders of these countries. They're very street smart. They're very smart people. They're — they know what they're doing. We have — they're at the top of their game. We have somebody that's not at the top of his game, never was at the top of a game. Never was. We have a guy who's a dumb son of a bitch. And to allow this to happen to our country — every dollar spent attacking me by Republicans is a dollar given straight to the Biden campaign, if he makes it. I don't know if he's going to make it. Who thinks he's going to be the candidate? So, ready? Are we going to be running against Joe Biden or somebody else, okay? Who do you think — I mean, just out of care. Okay, ready? Biden first. Are we going to be running against Biden? 
Are we going to be running against somebody else? Yeah, a lot of people feel that. See? I just saved $300,000 doing a poll. You ever see these pollsters? They interview 203 people. They charge you $700,000. And that poll is much better than a poll done by a pollster, in my opinion. The Republican Party must be united against the Marxist, communist, fascist, and globalist. I promise you this. If you put me back in the White House, their reign will be over and America will be a free nation once again. We're going to have a free nation. So we're thrilled to be joined tonight with some real warriors. And they've been warriors. I'll tell you, Mike used to stand out. We'd have rallies, and we'd do a lot of them outdoors. And we had one day, it was like 30 degrees. It was cold, we're freezing. And he's standing out there without even an undershirt. He's standing out there. And I didn't think his body was that good, to be honest with you. But he's standing out there, freezing. Remember that? I said, what the hell? He's a tough guy. He's a warrior. You have two people here, current congressmen, Dan Muser and Mike Kelly. These are incredible, incredible people, and they're going to help us win the state, along with Fred Keller, a former representative. Come up here, will you, fellas? What the hell? We have all day, right? It's Saturday. We have nothing to do. We took an arena instead of sta You know what we did? This was going to be an outside deal. Cost us a hell of a lot less money. But we said it's going to be 98 degrees. You know how hot it is outside? And we have all these beautiful people up front that we said, let's, let's do it this way. Come on up here, fellas. Come on up. Come on up. They're great people. These are fighters. They know how to fight. They're, they're tougher than Democrats, but we have a lot of them that we have a lot of them that aren't, unfortunately. Mike, say a couple of words, please. He's unbelievable, isn't he? With all he's accomplished in his life, why is he willing to put everything on the line again to be President of the United States. It can only be love of country. He's a patriot. He's a guy that will do anything to make America great again. But it's going to take all of us to get him there. I'm asking you to put in your mouthpiece, pull down your helmet, tighten the skin strap, and let's go out and win. Let's go win. Let's go win. Let's go. Let's go. things were when President Trump was president. Our national security was secure. Our border was secure. Gasoline prices were $1.50 lower. Energy dominance was on its way. The USA was on a roll. There was no inflation. Our economy was strong. And there was peace in the world. Are we going to make America great again? We're going to make the world great again by re-electing Donald J. Trump, the 47th President of the United States. Hey, Pennsylvania loves Donald Trump because Donald Trump loves Pennsylvania. Donald Trump loves America. Donald Trump is the only person that can win has been proven that he's going to stand up for us and fight for us and win, win, win. Thank you, Mr. President. We're here for you.
Thank you, Mike. Thank you. Oh, why can't we have more people like that? Also with us, uh, two really terrific friends of mine over the years, uh, Ambassador Carla Sands. You know Carla from here. Carla, please. Thank you. Great. And a terrific man, a real war hero, Sean Parnell. He did fantastically in the world of politics. Thank you, Sean. In four incredible years under our administration, we achieved more than any president in our lifetimes. We've gotten great reviews, even from the people that don't necessarily like us. The things we did, we delivered the largest tax cuts in history, the largest regulatory cuts in history. And likewise, we built the greatest economy in the history of the world. Nobody, no, no economy ever closed. And we were leapfrogging China. They never got us in 2018. We were going at a level that they could never have caught. And I said, they never will catch us if we have a smart president. I kept my promise to the people of Pennsylvania and withdrew from the disaster. They just resigned it, by the way. They just resigned it. They just went back in on worse terms. It was so bad, so unfair to us. Good for other countries, bad for us. That's the usual deal. We unleashed Pennsylvania energy workers to achieve energy independence and very soon energy dominance for the first time in 60 years. Your energy people are getting decimated right now. You know that. We had gas prices at $1.87 a gallon. And after years, $1.87 and uh, going way up. Watch what's going to happen. They're keeping it artificially low. They're taking our reserves, and they're keeping it artificially low. But artificially low is almost $4. After years of Washington betrayals of Pennsylvania workers, I ended the disaster known as NAFTA, in particular to Pennsylvania. The worst trade — that's the single worst trade deal ever made — and replaced it with the USMCA, the best trade deal ever made, they say, in this country. In fact, it's a deal so good that Mexico and Canada are now trying to renegotiate it with the Biden administration. Don't do it. We had to suffer with NAFTA for so many years. This is a great deal for us. Everybody knows it. I stood up to China like no administration has ever done before, bringing in hundreds of billions of dollars pouring into our Treasury right directly from China. They didn't love me too much, but I got along with them when no other president had ever gotten them to give anything, not anything, not a dollar. And when China targeted our farmers, as I told you before, we gave our farmers $28 billion right out of those tariffs that China was paying. Ron DeSanctimonious opposed my China tariffs, and he heartlessly opposed the $28 billion of money that was sent right into the pockets of our great farmers because of the Chinese abuse. You know, China abused our farmers. Very simply, DeSantis sided with the communists in China. I sided with the farmers of America. I think that's good. That's a good trade. A little-known fact is that DeSantis — and remember this — when you start off a certain way — these guys will tell you, and they, they're the same — when you start off a certain way, they believe in low taxes. They believe in the same thing, so it's okay. But. When you start off a certain way as a politician, you always go back to that. De Sanctis strongly opposed a thing called Social Security, and he wanted the, ra the age minimum to be 70, raised up to 70, which is a long way. And he also wanted to obliterate Medicare. Now, he voted at least four times on Social Security to destroy it. Uh, he'll get back there. I don't know what he's saying now. I don't think anybody cares too much anymore. In fact, this speech has obviously been very effective because he's gone to hell. But I don't even know why I repeat it, to be honest with you. But, you know, when you kill a snake, make sure that the snake is dead. We created the most secure border in U.S. history, built nearly 500 miles of border wall, got Mexico to give us 28,000 soldiers. How about these lightweights? They said, oh, he never got Mexico to give money for the war. I got them to give us 28,000 soldiers free of charge for years. That's why we had the best border numbers in history. 28,000 free of charge.
And I said to him, you've got to give us soldiers. No, 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 we will not do that. Oh, we will not do that. No, no, you have to give us soldiers for this because, you know, people are pouring through Mexico. You have to give us soldiers. Long border, one of the longest borders. Do you have to give us soldiers? No, no, no. I said, but you will. No, no, we will not. No, no, you will, 100%. And a person from the State Department, a woman, a good woman, she was so used to being turned down from Mexico by Mexico. For years, she was turned down. They said, sir, they will not do that. I've been trying to get that for 25 years. I said, let me do it. I said, we'll get it 100 percent. What else do you want? And they said, remain in Mexico. I'll get you that, too. What else do you want? And we got all these different things, catch and release, catch and release into Mexico, not into the U.S. So I said, give me your 10 hardest things. They gave me the 10. I said, I'll get all of them. So the man came in to represent Mexico, top guys right under the president. And again, I do like the president. I like this gentleman, too. And I said, you have to give us 28,000 soldiers for the border. No, no. Well, he left. He thought I was like, is this guy crazy or what? I said, no, no, you'll give them to us. No, no, we will not. Why would we do such a thing? Because people are pouring through your country, and they're coming in, and they're poisoning our country. They're destroying our country. No, 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 we will not do that. I said, yes, you will. No, you won't. I said, here's the story right before me, and I had it. It was a Thursday. I said, on Monday morning, I'm giving you a long time, at 8 o'clock in the morning, I think it's at 8, you will be charged a tariff of 25 percent on all cars and all Mexican product coming into the United States. No, 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 that is not right. I said, no, it is right. Either we get the 28,000 soldiers, or that's what's going to happen. May I be excused? I'd like to call somebody. Who? The President. He called the President, came back in five minutes. We would be — he just said this, these words. Sir, we would be delighted to give you 28,000. It would be our great honor. It be our great honor. So then you have all these dopes saying, he didn't get the money for the war. I got much more. I got much more. And we then negotiated where we had to remain in Mexico. They had to remain here. They would take people that we didn't know anything about. They'd go into the United States, would never find them again. I said, we want remain in Mexico. And we did that. We got remain in Mexico. And we deported illegal alien gang members, MS-13. By the tens of thousands, we got them out. We appointed over 300 federal judges and three great Supreme Court justices. And if you look at what's happened over the last, fellas, over the last two weeks, the Supreme Court has really, really done a job, including the fact that if you have great marks and you've worked hard and everything else, you're going to get into college, not somebody that's done very poorly and getting in for the wrong reasons, you know? Who, who thought that that was ever going to happen? Who thought that was going to happen? You're a great student if you deserve to get in there on merit. It's called the merit system. We're back to a merit system because of me and because of the justices. And last year, those justices ruled to end Roe v. Wade. And now — very tricky politically. You have to speak about it properly. Very tricky politically. And now pro-lifers have a tremendous power to negotiate, which they didn't have before the termination. This moves the issue — I want to talk about this issue quickly, because this moves the issue back to the states where all legal scholars on both sides felt it should be. And like Ronald Reagan, I support exceptions for rape, incest, and the life of the mother. I support that. Rape, incest, and the life of the mother. And you have to go and be ruled by your heart. But I think it's very difficult to win if you don't support those exceptions. I do. I don't even know what you guys are doing. But <laughs> Maybe I don't want to ask. I don't know. But I think it's very hard to win if you don't support. Really, Reagan did it. I did it against Hillary. You remember that famous evening? I said she'd be willing to rip the baby out of the womb in the ninth month. And even she winced at it because Remember this. The Democrats are the radicals on this issue, not us, because they're willing to kill babies in their fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth month, and even after birth. Even after birth, they're willing. So they're the extremists. And if you speak about this issue properly, 
And what you really have is, now that it's been terminated, you have a tremendous power to negotiate something that's fair for everybody. But nobody wants to see babies killed. But nobody wants to see them killed in the fourth and fifth and sixth and seventh and eighth and ninth and after birth. So if you can turn that issue around, you're going to make that issue a great issue instead of an issue where we lost because we had a lot of politicians running that had no idea how to talk about that issue. They were afraid of that issue. And these guys know how to talk about it. But uh, you had a lot of politicians that didn't understand it. They knew we had a victory, but they didn't know how to handle that victory. Uh, and now they do. They are the radicals, not us. I fully rebuilt the U.S. military, created Space Force, defeated ISIS, and brought our troops back home. I was the president. First in decades who didn't start a war. Remember, Hillary used to say, he's going to get us into war because of my personality, she said. He's got the personality type. No, I've got the personality type that kept us out of wars. But that was only the beginning. Here are just some of the bold agenda items that we'll immediately implement when we become 47th President of the United States. Before I even arrive at the Oval Office, shortly after we all together win the presidency, we will have the horrible war between Russia and Ukraine settled. It will be settled. The war is going to be settled. I'll get them both. I know Zelensky. I know Putin. It'll be done within 24 hours. You watch. They all say, that's such a boast. It will be done very quickly. I will totally obliterate the deep state. We got to get it out. We did a big job. I got rid of Comey. I got rid of a lot of, a lot of crap. But we will get rid of it. And I will say no to the 87 IRS agents who want to take your money. And much, much more than that, they want to weaponize the IRS, just like they've weaponized the Department of Justice and the FBI. I will end the disaster known as Bidenomics. You know, that was supposed to be a negative term. He liked the name so much, he's going around saying how wonderful it is. If you love inflation and a bad economy, let's go for it. Since taking office, Joe Biden has wrecked our economy. Home ownership has been pushed out of reach for millions and millions of Americans, with the rate of a 30-year mortgage up 150 percent. Think of this, 157, actually, percent since I left office. Real wages collapsed 26 months in a row. And typical Americans have seen their incomes crushed by more than 6,000 — that's the people in the room, everybody. $6,400 a year income crushed since Biden took office. And that's having to do with many, many factors, many, many factors. But think of that, $6,400 a month's wages on average. And I have some slides uh, brought out by some fantastic people. Where is Steve? Where are those slides? Where the hell are they? There they are. So we went up $6,400, and Biden lost $4,000. Think of that. Workforce participation falls after Trump leaves office. All you have to do is look at the lines. It's a disaster. Approval of the economy is three times higher under Trump than it is about under Biden. Or sometimes we call him O'Biden, because I think maybe Obama is calling the shots. Mortgage rates are twice as high under Biden than they are under Trump. So the mortgage rates have doubled and going, going higher. Gas prices, more than one and a half dollars per gallon more. Look at that chart. Look at that chart. It's crazy. Biden slashes oil production by a million barrels a day. You don't want that happening, but they want to go to that number. See what that number is? That's the worst number anybody's ever seen. They want to bring it down to zero. We're standing on liquid gold. We're going to repay our debt. We're going to lower taxes further. Anybody want these here? These are some numbers. As your president, I will quickly rebuild the greatest economy in history. We will stop Biden's inflation nightmare. I will end Joe Biden's sick crusade to destroy Pennsylvania energy. I will defend Pennsylvania energy jobs and will end 
the war on fracking. Fracking, big deal in Pennsylvania. We will again put America first. To bring back the jobs to Pennsylvania, I will impose a border tariff on all foreign-made goods. We want our products to be made in American factories, not by factories overseas. We want American workers working. I will also pass the Trump Reciprocal Trade Act. So that would mean that if India, China, or any other country hits us with their 100 and 200 percent tariff, we will hit them with the exact same tariff. Right now, they don't do that. And I was all set to do it. And then COVID came in, and we had to do other things. To end the radical Democrat war on the American consumer, on day one, I will cancel all Biden's regulatory dictates on light bulbs, furnaces. Did you see that? You got to rip out your furnace now. They want to put an environmentally correct furnace. It doesn't give any heat. Washing machines, dishwashers, shower heads, sinks, everything. We will gain total independence from China. I will hold the Chinese Communist Party accountable for unleashing, unleashing that China virus upon the world, and they will pay in some form. And we will go back, by the way, to electric cars and gasoline cars and hybrids and everything else. You're going to buy everything, not you're going to be stuck. How about California today? They announced massive blackouts. And then they want to have all electric cars. They don't have enough electric to, to keep an air conditioner on. The whole state is blacked out, and they want to put all electric cars. These people, I'm telling you, I think they hate our country. We're going back to everything. If you want an electric car, you can buy them like the other 5% of the population. You want a car that you stay in for an hour and 12 minutes? You know what? Your single thought in, and a friend of mine has an electric car. And I'm not knocking him. Everything's good. Everything. You got to have a choice. Some people like it, some people don't. But he says, I get into an electric car, it's all charged up. After 10 minutes, the only thing I'm thinking about is where am I getting my next charge? It's very interesting. But if you want to go into a great industry, if Biden's plan ever went through, which it won't, I, I don't even believe it could, but it ever went through, if you want to get into a great business, all the men have got great business people sitting up here, great business people in this, this area. This area is amazing. I know so many of them. If you want a good business with all electric cars, go into the tow truck business. Because <laughs> you'll be towing people all day long. So crazy, so crazy. It's so crazy. I will immediately terminate every open border policy of the Biden administration. Under Biden, other countries are emptying out their prisons and their insane asylums and their mental institutions, as I said, and dumping everyone right here in the United States. Congratulations. I hope you enjoy the company of these wonderful people. Last month, an illegal alien in Lee County, Florida, who came in through Joe Biden's wide-open border, kidnapped a young woman outside a nightclub, took her to a nearby wooded area, brutally beat her — you read about this — and raped her while strangling and threatening to kill her. Before she escaped, then he tracked her down and went after her again. And in Tennessee last month, an illegal alien criminal with a long rap sheet of offenses was arrested after police found video of him drugging and violently raping at least 10 young boys, ages 9 to 17. Following the Eisenhower model — you know, Eisenhower was very tough on illegal Im immigration — we will use all necessary state, local, federal, and military resources. Because, you know, you're great police. You have great police in Pennsylvania, and your great police know where the bad ones are. They know them by name. You got to go local, you know? The federal government can help, but you got to go local, and they'll give them, and we'll get them the hell out of your — out of your territory here, because you are — you are just — you just can't live this way, because these people are dangerous. They are dangerous. Again, the jails and the mental institutions are being emptied out. They're almost empty now. We will carry out the largest domestic deportation operation in American history. We have no choice. And we will use Title 42 to end child trafficking crisis by returning all trafficked children to their families in their home countries immediately.
This month in North Dakota, a Syrian refugee allowed in by Barack Hussein Obama. Has anybody ever heard of him? Killed a 23-year-old police officer and injured two others very badly and an innocent civilian when he fired 60 rounds of ammunition from the back of his truck. When I'm reelected, we will bring back the Trump travel ban even bigger than before to keep radical Islamic terrorists and jihadists out of our country. And I wouldn't, I wouldn't speak about it in the before situation, but look, look how that worked out. We went four years without virtually a problem, didn't we? Remember how bad it was? thing called the World Trade Center, lots of other things. I wouldn't talk about it, but I will tell you now that we've served those four years. It was amazing how effective that was. To stop the Marxist prosecutors who release rapists and murderers while persecuting conservatives, I will direct a completely overhauled, and we're going to overhaul it with some unbelievable people heading Radical district attorney and attorney general in America, Soros back for their illegal racist and reverse enforcement of the law. On day one, I will sign a new executive order to cut federal funding for any school pushing critical race theory, transgender insanity, and other inappropriate racial, sexual, or political content on our children. We want great schools that lead to great jobs and to great lives. And we want people that love our country. We want people to love our country. I will keep men out of women's sports, and I will sign a law prohibiting child sexual mutilation in all 50 states. And I will not give one penny to any school that has a vaccine mandate or a mask mandate from kindergarten through college. I will also continue my long record of standing up to Big Pharma. You know they don't like me, you know that. By creating a special presidential commission to investigate what is causing the decades-long increase in childhood diseases autoimmune disorders, autism, obesity, infertility, and other chronic health problems. We're going to get to the bottom of it pretty fast. And just as I did for four years, and without fail, without waiver, I will fully uphold and defend our Second Amendment. Thank you. They want to defund our police, and then they want to take your guns away so you can't protect yourself. I will fully secure our elections, very importantly, and our goal will be one-day voting with only paper ballots. But until then, Republicans have to compete, and we have to win. This is what we must do to restore our country to greatness. We're not a great country anymore. We're a laughingstock all over the world with, with a man that can't speak properly, can't speak intelligently, has no idea where the hell he is. Together, we are taking on some of the most menacing forces and vicious opponents our people have ever seen. But no matter how hateful and corrupt the communists and criminals we are fighting against may be, you must never forget this nation does not belong to them. This nation belongs to you. you.
This is your home, this is your heritage, and our American liberty is your God-given right. From Allentown to Johnstown, from Harrisburg to Pittsburgh, from Easton to Altoona to right here in beautiful Erie. I love Erie. They've been with me. They've been with me, Mike, right from the beginning. They changed. We stand on the shoulders of American legends who poured out their blood, sweat, and tears for our rights and our freedom. Pennsylvania is where our founding fathers declared American independence. A big deal, big deal. It's where the Army weathered its brutal winter at Valley Forge, where General George Washington led his men on a daring mission across the Delaware, and where our Union was saved by the immortal heroes at Gettysburg. So many places in Pennsylvania. Probably there's no other place like it. It is the place where generations of tough, strong Pennsylvania miners, factory workers, and steel workers forged the greatest nation in the history of the world. And we have to bring it back. Gotta bring it back. But now, we are a nation in decline. We are a failing nation. We are a nation that has the highest inflation in 50 years, where banks are collapsing and interest rates are through the roof. Likewise, we are a nation where energy costs have reached the highest in our history. We are no longer energy independent or energy dominant as we were just a few short years ago. We are a nation that is begging Venezuela and many others for oil. Please, please, please help us, Joe Biden says. Yet we have more liquid gold right under our feet than any other nation in the world. We are a country that is consumed by the radical left's Green New Deal Yet everyone knows that the Green New Deal is fake and will lead to our country's destruction. We are a nation whose leaders are demanding all electric cars, even though they can't go far, cost too much, and whose batteries are produced in China with materials only available in China when an unlimited amount of gasoline is available inexpensively in the United States, but not available in China. We are a nation that ended oil exploration and production in the U.S. just as the price of oil reached an all-time high. What other country would do such a thing? How foolish can we be? We are a nation that surrendered in Afghanistan, leaving behind dead soldiers, American citizens, and $85 billion worth of the finest military equipment anywhere in the world. We are a nation that allowed Russia to devastate a country, Ukraine, killing hundreds of thousands of people, and it will only get worse. It would never have happened with me as your president, and for four straight years, it didn't happen. And China with Taiwan, is next. We're a nation that has weaponized its law enforcement against the opposing political party like never before. We've got a Federal Bureau of Investigation that won't allow bad election-changing facts to be presented to the public, and which offers $1 million to a writer of fiction about Donald Trump to lie and say it was a fact where Hunter Biden's laptop from hell was Russian disinformation, and the FBI knew it wasn't. But 51 intelligence agents said it was. 
And they knew it wasn't also. And a Department of Justice that refuses to investigate the egregious acts of voting irregularities and fraud. And we have a man who is totally corrupt and the worst president in the history of our country who is cognitively impaired and in no condition to lead and is now in charge of dealing with Russia and possible nuclear war, which would be World War III and far more devastating than any of the previous world wars because of weaponry that no one even wants to think about. The levels of power are belief, just beyond any belief. We are a nation that no longer has a free and fair press. Fake news is all you get, and they are truly the enemy of the people. They refuse to discuss the Biden crime family, but enjoy covering false indictments of Donald Trump, who has done nothing wrong. We are a nation where free speech is no longer allowed, and where crime is rampant and out of control like never before in our history. We are a nation that is allowing Iran to build a massive nuclear weapon and China to use the trillions and trillions of dollars it has taken from us to build a military to more than rival our own. And less than three years ago, we had Iran, China, Russia, and North Korea in check. They weren't going to do a thing against us, and everyone knows it. They respected your leader, they respected your president, and they respected your country. Now Russia and China are holding summits together to carve up the world. And perhaps most importantly, we are a nation that is no longer respected or listened to on the world stage. We're a nation that in many ways has become a joke. We are a nation that is hostile to liberty, freedom, and faith. And we are a nation whose economy is collapsing into a cesspool of ruin, whose supply chain is broken, whose stores are not stocked, whose deliveries are not coming, and whose educational system is ranked at the very bottom of every single list. We are a nation where large packs of sadistic criminals and thieves are allowed to go into stores and openly rob them, beat up and kill their workers and customers, and leave with armloads of goods, but with no retribution, where the authority of our great police has been taken, where their families and pensions have been threatened, and their lives would be destroyed for the mere mention of the words law enforcement. We are a nation where fentanyl and other forms of illegal drugs are easier to get than formula for our beautiful little babies. A nation whose once revered airports are dirty, a crowded mess. You sit and wait for hours and then are notified that the plane won't leave and they have no idea when they will. Where ticket prices have tripled, they don't have the pilots to fly the planes. They don't seek qualified air traffic controllers anymore. And they just don't know what they're doing. We are a nation that has lost its confidence, lost its willpower, and a nation that lost its strength. We are a nation that, frankly, has lost its way but we are not going to allow this horror to continue. Three years ago, we were a great nation, and we will soon be a great nation again. It was hardworking patriots like you who built this country, and it is hardworking patriots like you who are going to save our country. 2024 is our final battle. With your support in this primary, we are going to finish what we started. With you at my side, we will demolish the deep state. We will drive out the globalists. We will cast out the communists. We will throw off the sick, 
political class that truly hates our country, and we will rout the fake news media. We will defeat crooked Joe Biden, and we will drain the swamp in Washington, D.C., once and for all. Like those patriots before us, we will not bend, we will not break, we will not yield, we will never give in, we will never give up, and we will never, ever back down. Together, we will complete the mission. We will cross the finish line. We will rescue freedom, liberty, and justice. And we will take back this country with a righteous and magnificent victory on Election Day 2024. The great silent majority of America is rising like never before. There's never been anything like this. There has never been anything like what you're witnessing today, more so than 2016, more so than 2020. There has never been anything like it. And under our leadership, it's our leadership, the forgotten men and women, this country will be forgotten no longer. We are one movement, one people, one family, and one nation under God. And together, we will make America powerful again. We will make America wealthy again. We will make America strong again. We will make America proud again. We will make America safe again. And we will make America great again. Thank you. Democrat stronghold until we came along. It's no longer, it's, it's a Republican. It's a Trump stronghold. We love Erie. We love you people, hardworking people. I'm thrilled to be back in the beautiful Commonwealth of Pennsylvania with thousands of proud, hardworking American patriots. For seven years, you and I have been fighting side by side to rescue our nation from the sinister forces who truly hate it and want to destroy it. And some of those are from within. We do know that. We do know that. Now we're approaching the most important battle of our lives. With your help, we are going to win the Pennsylvania primary very easily, actually. And we're going to evict crooked Joe Biden from the White House. We're going to take back our country, and we're going to make America